And for more on this ongoing situation, Ben O'Quist, the Executive Director at the Australia Institute, joins us now. Ben, always appreciate some of your time. Now, Putin spoke for the first time in quite a long time. What did you make of some of his comments? Yeah, well, he has uh, spoken for the first time in a month. Worryingly, of course, he said that he's hit back at the US for not agreeing to his conditions, which is, you know, for basically... Um, the US to rule out ever allowing the Ukraine into NATO and uh, a removal of uh, weapons infrastructure uh, from Eastern Europe to some extent. Um, and he's hit back at that. Um, but on the other hand, um, diplomatic efforts are still going on and um, it's it's not inevitable that there's war. Now, it's very easy to kind of fall into simple thinking that war is inevitable and it's incumbent upon all of us to, to resist it. Now, there is a big diplomatic force going on from the US. That's a good thing. Um, there's some positive signs there. Some behind the scenes negotiations suggest that um, the US is willing to look at allowing Russia to verify there aren't um, uh, attack missiles in Romania and Poland, Poland and, uh, and a verification scheme. So. Uh, that's the good sign. I, th I think the missing piece is the Ukraine. We're hearing a lot about what Russia's saying and a lot about uh, what the US is saying, but not enough about what uh, Ukraine is thinking. And we've got to bring them back into the centre of it. Um, after all, it affects them most, not, notwithstanding the, the massive um, geopolitical and um, ramifications for, for Europe and the world. It's always a little challenging to know exactly what Putin wants, uh, what Russia wants and, and where they want this to head. Um, what's your concern at the moment if you have one? Because we've seen this before. We know Russia has looked to um, try to invade and cross the border of Ukraine. But is there anything different about this situation? Do, do we have a sense of what Putin is after here? Well, uh, uh at one level, what Putin is, is after is basic, which is uh, security for Russia. Um, uh, but what his grander geostrategic thinking is, is unclear. Um, what's true, though, is that the US is somewhat a diminished power after uh, uh, long uh, political struggles back um, in the US unresolved, um, uh, a diminished uh, international force that is seen to have uh, taken on unwinnable, uh, unpopular um, and in the end unwarranted wars, uh, the US is, is a diminished power to some extent. Now, whether that's going to uh, be sustained over time is not clear, but they're not the same superpower they once were. And clearly it's possible uh, that Putin is taking advantage of that. Um, but the real question is, can a diplomatic outcome uh, be found with these changing geostrategic um, power balances? Uh, and I think that's what is incumbent upon all countries uh, to get behind. It's a little bit worrying, you know, that the Ukraine um, government spoke out strongly about Australia removing its uh, officials from Ukraine, and they said, well, tanks aren't in the streets yet. Um, and I think if, if, if all countries continue to think that war is inevitable, um, it can, can be um, uh, self-fulfilling. Um, the good sign is that there are these behind the scenes talks and why would Russia be entertaining them if, if there wasn't still a possibility uh, of avoiding war and if, if Russia is genuine that they're worried about uh, their security, uh, not um, expansionist interest to take over U Ukraine, it is about securing their borders and um, uh, ceasing NATO's expansion, well then a diplomatic solution is possible. Just a final one on this one, Ben. Uh, let's look at President Joe Biden. You speak about America being a diminished power. What, what's the pressure like on Biden? And is this an opportunity for him? Because we know his numbers in terms of popularity uh, have been rather low. Yeah, well, uh, it, it's a worrying sign in the US, isn't it? You know, uh, a lot of people around the world, a lot of Australians were very relieved uh, when Donald Trump la uh, uh, lost the last election terrified by what came next to basically an assault on, on US democracy. There was big hopes that uh, Biden um, and the Democrats could reset that debate and there could be some kind of return to normalcy in uh, the US, uh, which is, you know, uh, rightly or wrongly been seen as a standard bearer for democracy. The worrying sign is that that's not happening and that Trump is on the march again uh, and uh, following a kind of disastrous uh, foreign policy 
um, execution as the US withdrew from Afghanistan, notwithstanding it was a difficult position for Biden, uh, uh, that the stakes are very high uh, that the US uh, can play a, a constructive role here. I mean, nobody is suggesting that US troops um, confront Russian troops, um, but uh, the, the stakes are high for Biden to try and achieve some kind of um, uh, peaceful outcome without putting um, uh, further strains on US resources. Just briefly to finish, uh, let's have a look at Australia. Scott Morrison has been in the headlines over recent times. He spoke yesterday, of course. The election is coming up. How do you see uh, him playing this out at the moment? Because the pandemic has been a massive challenge. You know, the debt is a major challenge at the moment. What did you make of what the Prime Minister said and, and, and the upcoming few months? Yeah, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, um, by and large, incumbent governments, Trump notwithstanding, who really mishandled the pandemic, uh, through through the pandemic, incumbent governments, the state, certainly at a state level in uh, Australia and in, and in many places, did well through the pandemic because voters um, necessarily re uh, return to a government. They want their government to succeed in a crisis and are often back their government. And that was certainly the trend in the first uh, year or two of the pandemic. But now it seems like incumbency is actually, uh, it hinders political support for governments. And I think Morrison's crossed that threshold um, that he's now on the back foot because of uh, the pandemic. His big job, and he set this out uh, at the press club yesterday, is, is to try and make this election not a referendum on his performance because uh, he's been marked down by the electorate, who's had another bad summer as a result of uh, the pandemic. Um, he's trying to make it a contest between him and Albanese. And, and in a sense, yeah. what's going on is that Scott Morrison wants the election to be about the opposition leader. And the opposition leader wants the election to be about uh, Scott Morrison. And whoever wins that will probably win the election. I'll jump in there. Ben, thank you so much for your time and insight. Plenty to get through. We'll talk to you really soon. Thanks, Adrian. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas. 